The uh, integral molten salt reactor is uh, part of a class of uh, reactors called, probably best described as advanced reactors. Um, and what's interesting about advanced reactors is they address today's market need, particularly environmental needs, uh, in, a, in a very different way. Um, our reactor system is a uh, liquid fuel reactor system, um, and that stands in contrast to the, the reactor systems that have been commercialized to date. They have all been solid fuel reactors. Ours is a liquid fuel reactor. So we're doing something that's very, very different to what's been done, uh, done previously. Now, the interesting thing about this is this is not, uh, this is not new technology at all. You know, this technology has been developed at a, uh, with, with um, uh, uh, very large sovereign programs, in, uh, 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 research programs in the US in the, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. So what we're doing with this technology is, is as, as a private company, is recognizing that today's market need has changed, recognizing that maybe a better solution to the nuclear technologies we see today, um, and looking at the, uh, uh, at, uh, the, um, the, the, the advanced reactors that have been developed at the national lab level and asking uh, a, a very business-like question. Do any of these reactors address today's market need, today's environmental needs um, in, a, in a very different way? We think our react system does. We think it gives nuclear, advanced nuclear, uh, a, a critically important um, uh, uh, touch point in uh, competitive touch points in global energy markets, namely one which is potentially cost competitive with fossil fuels. That's, that's very exciting in terms of energy substitution. The future as we see it is, is uh, the deployment in the 2020s. This is, this is not a 25 year project by any means. We, we're in that final step of engineering and deployment. So the future of IMSR is deployment uh, 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 um, first of all, probably in power markets, they are the traditional users, power utilities are the traditional users of nuclear power. But the, I think the really, really exciting thing is the use of the IMSR within the, 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 the industrial sector. And the trouble about the industrial sector, it makes an enormous contribution to greenhouse uh, gas emissions. It's probably about a third of the, of the problem. Um, variable renewable energy sources don't show the capacity to deal with it because you can't run an industrial plant with a variable energy source. You need a baseload energy source, baseload heat and power. Now our system provides baseload heat and power. It provides heat um, at 600 degrees C and there's an awful lot you can do in the industrial sector with heat at 600 degrees C. So the, the, what, what we have here is the possibility that you have a clean, highly scalable industrial energy source that's cost competitive with natural gas and fossil fuels, providing things like cheap hydrogen, cheap chlorine, Cheap, uh, sorry, clean hydrogen, uh, clean chlorine, uh, um, uh, clean ammonia. Um, those are very important primary industrial commodities, um, and at the moment, there's virtually no alternative but to use natural gas uh, in, 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 in their production. So this is this is a possibility of generating those really important, critically important primary materials, primary uh, uh, um, um, industrial commodities, uh, in, with with uh, clean methods. You'll save an awful lot. Of, uh, of, of CO2 uh, if, you, if you can achieve that. Well, we're working on our, uh, on our deployment in Canada um, and we're working on our, our deployment project in the, in the United States. Uh, we had a, uh, uh, the, the, our, US, uh, our US company, Trust for Energy USA, um, announced last week that um, uh, we, we had uh, been invited to part two, the second part of a, uh, a DOE uh, loan guarantee application um, for between 800 uh, million and 1.2 billion in loan guarantee support from the Department of Energy. So that's, that's obviously an important development and, and we're working very much on that project. The key point is to understand how big the problem we face is. Um, fossil fuels represent 82% of the global energy basket. Nuclear represents 4%. We are committing, through public statements, collectively, as represented by statements, let's say, at the Paris last year, COP21, we want to reduce that, uh, not just a little bit, we want to reduce it, let's say, so we have a global energy basket where the fossil fuel contributions are less than 20%. That is an enormous energy substitution, vast. 
you, it's so important to appreciate the scale because if you don't appreciate the scale, you don't appreciate that you have to make certain, uh, recognize that scalability in your solutions is very, very important too. And nuclear is enormously scalable. Nuclear uh, technology in all its forms is far, far more scalable than fossil fuels. Uh, we have access to uh, uh, nuclear fuels that are easily accessible in the Earth's crust for a nuclear industry to run for thousands of years, maybe 10,000 of years. Um, um, and that is a, that's a profile that, that the fossil fuel industry can't match. So if you want to remove that enormous component of fossil fuels in the global energy basket, you have to be able to replace it by something that's equally or more scalable. Uh, that is what nuclear can do. And it's done it before. It's decarbonized, deeply decarbonized the grid in France. It's, it's uh, uh, with a 10-year a, 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 a program of, of, um, uh, of um, nuclear deployment, obviously conventional nuclear. So nuclear, uh, this is not an experiment in, um, in clean tech. You know, nuclear has demonstrated its capacity to do that, and we believe, with our system, the integral molten salt reactor, we are, uh, that, that nuclear is capable of, uh, of doing that again. Thank you.